Marianne McCormick, a longtime parishioner here at St. Francis Cabrini. I hope you're enjoying this Advent season. Tonight, I'd like to share a word to the why in some Christmas traditions. Why do we do these things? Over the centuries and across many nations and cultures, the Feast of Christmas is celebrated with joy and profound thanks for God's greatest gift, his Son. Here are a few reasons behind some of those traditions. Why do we call it Christmas? From the Old English, Christus Mass, meaning the Mass of Christ. It was common to refer to any feast as the Mass of. For example, the Feast of St. Michael was called Michael Mass. The practice dates back to the 11th century. Well, then why do some call it Xmas? This is a Greek abbreviation. The word for Christ in Greek is Christos, and that's X-R-I-S-T-O-S. -S. In the 16th century, Europeans used the first initial of Christ's name, X, in place of the word Christ in Christmas. It was just a shortened form of the word. These Christians understood that X stood for Christ's name. Later, others who did not understand the Greek language, including many Christians, assumed it was a secular title and mistook Xmas as a sign of disrespect, which unfortunately has happened. Why are there 12 days of Christmas? During the Middle Ages, that would be from about 400 to 1400, Christmas was a festival of feasting and merrymaking that lasted from Christmas Eve until the Feast of the Epiphany on January 6th, 12 days later. Epiphany is from the Greek, meaning to show, which marks the time that Jesus was revealed to the world. As late as the 19th century, Epiphany was as big a celebration as Christmas Day. Why do we send Christmas cards? Sir Henry Cole of England is credited with creating the first real Christmas card. He was so busy in December 1843 that he had no time to compose individual letters to his friends. He commissioned an artist to design a card with three panels. The center panel showed a family enjoying Christmas with the message, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you. Why do we hang Christmas stockings? This comes from a famous legend about St. Nicholas. The story is told of a kindly nobleman who grew despondent over the death of his beloved wife and squandered his fortune. This left his three young daughters without dowries and facing a life of spinsterhood or worse. Generous St. Nicholas, hearing of the girl's plight, wanted to help, but knew the father would not accept money from him. Wishing to remain anonymous, he rode by the man's house and threw three small pouches of gold coins down the chimney. The pouches fell into the girl's stockings that had been hung on the mantelpiece to dry. The story of St. Nicholas's generosity spread throughout the land. Since then, it has been a tradition to hang stockings on Christmas in the hope of receiving a gift from St. Nicholas. What about Rudolph? Sorry, but there's no legend, no custom, no long history. This was a 20th century advertising campaign. In 1939, a, new, a retailer called Montgomery Ward, kind of like Sears or Walmart, asked one of their copywriters to, to come up with a Christmas story. It was given to customers during the holiday shopping season as a store promotion. In 1947, the story was published commercially as a book. At the same time, a song was written and recorded. And I'm sure we all know it. The story and song have grown beyond their commercial origins to become a beloved part of the holiday. This is only a sampling of the many, many traditions that have grown up with our understanding of Christ's birth all those years ago. What traditions do you celebrate? As Christians, we all come together to celebrate this great feast of God's love. May the coming of the Christ child bring you the gift of love, the blessings of hope, 
and the promise of peace, whatever your family tradition. See you on this coming fourth Sunday of Advent.